All righty. All right. Well, it looks like we've chosen to explore the outside to do the side quest. Uh, so let's head out there. Um, I mentioned earlier, uh, in the intro video actually, that the Colonel's Bequest is different from a lot of graphical adventure games at this time because it is not puzzle-based or pick up a lot of items-based. It's more of a mystery where you have to ask the characters what's going on. Well, there is actually one exception to that, and that is this side quest, um, which we don't really have any way to know about beyond just sort of poking around and being psychic. Um, the first part of this takes place outdoors, so let's head out there and we'll see what we can see. This is where we came in to begin with. Uh, if you recognize that, Jeeves opened this front door for us. And who knows, there might be a key or something. Nah, no, there's no key under there. This, I thought, was supposed to be a warning the first time I played, that we weren't supposed to go outside, because uh, Laura says it's creepy out there and she doesn't like it. It's not. Um, there's no reason to not be outside exploring, and the fact there's things you can gain. But uh, it locked off the side quest for me the first time I played. This is kind of an ominous view, I think, of the mansion, although it does look pretty nice. We can see a storm in the background, but it's still a uh, nice night where we are. But there seems to be a storm approaching. Uh, so whether or not that's important, we'll find out, I guess. I'm going to include a separate video of myself exploring the grounds and just showing you where everything is. Uh, for this video, we're pretty much just going to be going right where we need to. With one little detour. And I thought we'd stop up here and check out the little playhouse. This was presumably for the kids that used to live here. Um, when the either the, the croutons or the Dijons owned the place. We'll find out more about the croutons in just a little bit. Um, it's been abandoned long ago. I mean, obviously, the colonel doesn't have any children on the premises or anything. But there's still a swing, so, you know, maybe it'd be fun to uh, swing a little bit. Just sort of take our mind off of how the... Oh, nope. Wait, joke. Laura's too fat. Ha, ah, female protagonists. Um, this does sort of bring up an interesting point, though, about the portrayal of Laura. Um, not that weight jokes are a big thing in this game, but... I don't think the game or maybe the era that she is supposed to be from, the 1920s, can really decide what to do with female protagonists. Um, here's a, a uh, Stables, by the way. Uh, so on the one hand, she is definitely our heroine. She is brave and investigative. There's the colonel's horse. Um, we'll be in here later. There's more to do now, but not really anything for now. So we'll, we'll come back later. Um, as I was saying, she's, she's brave, and she investigates, and she doesn't you know, run crying or screaming or anything like that. Uh, but maybe because of the era this is supposed to be from, or maybe just because of the way that the developers wrote the game or something, she's not really, I wouldn't say heroic at any point in time. Maybe once very late game, but she's very not confrontational. There are a few times coming up that, uh, that I'll explain where it really seems like she should uh, confront somebody, but she just never does. Just walks away. Well, here we are in the uh, the corner of the island with our owl friend. He's just uh, hanging out, doing his nightly rodent patrol, you know, like an owl does. You can see more of that storm in the background. So the real place that we were heading was not to that carriage house, but instead up here. I'm sorry, not to the stables, but to the carriage house, which is right up here. Um, so apparently, they used to have room for horses and for carriages to come and go on this island. Now, it is completely isolated now, as you'll see in the exploration video if you want to watch that. Um, but you can't, and there's not really room for a horse. I mean, I guess you could take them around the mansion. Uh, or carriages. This boat, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a reference to the SS Minnow of Gilligan's Island fame. Um, if it is, that doesn't come up again, and we certainly we're not going to be using it or doing aquatic exploration or anything like that. Um, just a little detail, I guess, they threw in there. Also, the boat that took us here was the Jesse, and I, I have no idea what that might, might even refer to. Here we're going to see one of the annoying parts of the game. I'm going to take that oil can, but no, I'm not close enough, even though her arm is definitely, like, inches from the oil can. She has to be standing right in front of it. 
Um, <laughs> I also like when you try to pick up stuff and just like, okay, whatever. Now, there's nothing else that we can see in here. That oil can was kind of obvious. But if we take a little look around, look in the carriage, we find a, uh, you know, an old crowbar. So maybe they were doing some uh, crowing out here, some crow, crow work. Anyway, we have that. Um, you can maybe sort of see the familiar formula of adventure games where we're picking up everything that we come across. Um, oh, as I, I, as I was saying before, the island is completely cut off now. Uh, there's bridges that are broken down that we can't cross, and they talk a lot about the rising swamp water sort of um, cutting us off from everything, but presumably this was a plantation back in the day, so I guess they would have had uh, carriages coming in and out, uh, making deliveries and taking in farm equipment, and uh, they also would have had slaves back in the day to work the uh, field, seeing as this was the south in Louisiana. Um, I guess they would have used the bell tower to make announcements or something like that. Uh, we can see the old fields back there. They're supposed to be going to seed. The idea is that they are they haven't been planted or tilled in a very long time. Um, they still look pretty neat to me, but, uh, you know, maybe that's just a, a graphical thing. They really needed us to know that that was a field. I think that back fence back there might might be the end of the um, island. Like, it might not go further back. I don't know, it kind of looks like you can you can either see fields on the other side of it, or um, just the lattice of fences. I'm not really sure. We never go back there, so that's not going to be important. It could just be fields as far as the eye can, can see, which I guess would make sense, because just this little enclosure doesn't look like much sugar cane for a whole plantation. Um, I'm just going to say what happens if we pull the ring. Of course, we're not close enough. We need to be three feet closer. So what happens if we pull it? That is not an A-game effort, Laura. That is not even... You weren't even trying for that. Anyway, too high for us to reach. We're a little tiny person and we can't jump because we're in a dress. Uh, so maybe we'll come back later. Maybe. That's all I'm saying. There's a little chapel. I'm not sure if this was supposed to be for everybody, if they permitted the slaves to go to uh, church, if they brought in a pastor or what, or if the family would do readings. Uh, either way, it's kind of broken down. There's no, again, particular reason that we would be up here, um, except for exploration, which uh, is encouraged. You know, a couple people told us to go explore. It's kind of neat in here. Um, I would say that this next part seems impossible to find just accidentally, but I actually found it myself on my first playthrough. Uh, so, it was pretty late in the game when I found it, but, you know, I, I came across it. So there's a nice stained glass window, there's some some statues. Uh, if those are supposed to be religious icons, I guess that might indicate... They're probably not Catholic. I don't know, for some reason this doesn't seem like a Catholic place. But if they're icons, that means um, they're a branch of Protestantism that doesn't mind icons. Uh, I, that matters, that never really comes up either. I think my first time I was coming up here to see what was going on with the pulpit. And if you just sort of walk around up here... oh run into, it mentions that a floorboard sags. So, maybe we ought to take a look at that, pry up the board. And she gives it to the, the old college try, but she can't seem to move it. Fortunately, uh, back at that carriage house, we managed to acquire ourselves a crowbar. So with the crowbar and a little elbow grease, we uh, successfully pry it up. That doesn't look like it took any effort at all. I'm not sure that she couldn't have got that with her hands. That just all the way right up. Anyway, not close enough to look in the hole, because, hooray, adventure games. But we have an old Bible in here. Now, this would be kind of a cool find, historically. I mean, uh, you know, evidently they chose to hide this for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but, um, if we look on the inside, we can see a list of the croutons. Now, I mentioned them before. That is the family that owned this plantation uh, back before the Civil War. You can see people all the way back to 1787. So that's... It's been quite a while now. They, they seem French, which, you know, makes sense, this being Louisiana and all. Um, the last two entries, well, the, some of the last entries, are Mary and Sarah Crouton. And you can see those don't have the dates of their death. So evidently, um, something happened to sort of drive them away from here before they could die and be noted. Also, we get this sort of mysterious note. 
Sarah, our end is near, the bell will ring, uh, Lancelot will salute us, um, and don't weep for us, we'll watch over you, etc. So, if we think, we, we might be able to put together some parts of this already. We've seen a bell before. Uh, Sir Lancelot sounds like a knight, and if I recall correctly, there was a suit of armor in the main hall, so maybe that's something to do with that. Anyway, we, uh, that's all we can do. We can't take the Bible with us or really show anybody about it. But let's see what's on the other side of this chapel. Looks like there was a little graveyard back there, so maybe a little family affair. And if we go in here, uh, we can see two large tombs. One for the Croutons and one for the Dijons, which makes sense. I guess, I think, uh, Colonel... D oh, that is clearly a ghost. And it's pointing at something. And I do not know what. I will be honest with you. I like how Laura is freaked out by going outside, the night in general. She will be scared by a lot of things in the future. But that ghost, she's like, nah, it's a wisp of smoke. A single person-shaped wisp of smoke. Anyway. Doesn't even know what we mean by being uh, great. I'm not... I think Colonel Henri de Jean was the only one to have owned this plantation, so I guess he built a family tomb, sort of, for himself. Uh, and put it in the, the Crouton family graveyard. Which seems odd, but he's sort of eccentric anyway. Uh, we can't get in the Crouton tomb, but Colonel Dijon's tomb, we can, we can take a look in here. It's kind of freaky, but there's no doubt. I don't think you can ever die here. I I was terrified the first time, because I was sure that somebody was going to like pop out and, and you know, stab me or, or strangle me or something when I opened in there, but I don't, I don't think that's one of the places. Well, anyway, that's about all there is to do outside for now. Um... I think I'm just going to cut to us being back in the mansion. We're not going to see really anywhere new going outside. Nowhere that we won't see any exploration video or see later. So I'll see you guys back in the mansion. Alright, well we're back in the house. And here is that suit of armor that I mentioned. Now, if you look at the armor, I take a little offense to this, it mentions that all of its joints are completely rusted. Very specifically. You might think that you want to oil the joints, because you have a can of oil, and the joints are rusted. Well, we'll show you later what happens if you do that. But suffice to say, that is not the correct thing to do. No, you're supposed to oil the helmet. See, I figured if you could oil the joint, you could, like, move his arm up so that he's saluted for the last time. But the real key is, in order to properly salute, a knight would have to lift the visor on their helmet, which we're doing here. That's an awfully bullet-shaped helmet. But, uh... Once it's oiled, which again, Laura's like, okay, whatever, we can lift the helmet and discover underneath something. It's hard to make out what that is exactly, but hopefully they'll tell us soon. A valve handle, and after we grab it, after we grab it, an old yellowed note, which I guess they... Elmer's glue in there or something. Which is good, because just a valve handle would be hard um, to interpret without any context, I feel like. So you read the old note, and 